Hello, my name is Sydney Hall, and I am a Wellbeing Ambassador at ECU Campus Recreation and Wellness, also known as the CRW. Today, we are going to be doing a program on bystander intervention. After this program, you will be able to define power-based violence and understand the importance of being an active bystander, as well as the roles and responsibilities of a bystander. You will also be able to recognize barriers that may prevent you from intervening and ways to overcome them. The purpose of this program is to give you the tools, knowledge, and confidence to be an active bystander. Too many people experience power-based violence while in college. About 18% of women and 4% of men experience some form of assault while in college. The percentages are higher for those who are transgender, genderqueer, and non-binary. Power-based personal violence is any form of violence that uses power, control, and intimidation to harm another person. Can you think of some examples of power-based violence? For example, stalking, dating or domestic violence, and sexual assault. These are common types of power-based violence. You may have heard of these, but may not know the correct definition. Stalking is a targeted action that will make someone feel afraid, like tracking someone's social media, giving unwanted gifts, and monitoring someone's communications and actions. For example, cell phone location and snap maps. Dating or domestic violence is physical, sexual, or psychological harm or threat of harm by a current or past partner. Sexual assault is sexual contact that occurs without consent. Bystander intervention is important. By being an active bystander, you could reduce someone's chances of experiencing an act of power-based violence. For those that might be experiencing power-based violence, there are different steps you can take. Calling a domestic abuse hotline and developing a plan to keep you safe. Calling a domestic abuse hotline at 1-800-799-7233. They also have a chat feature within their website. The website and number will be shown again on the resource page. Second, is to develop a plan to keep you safe when a situation escalates. This may include where to go, who to call, who can help, or a signal for friends and family. Problematic behaviors can often resemble common behaviors of normal, healthy relationships. It can be hard to determine if a situation is problematic. These three tips will help you determine if it is appropriate to intervene or not. First, take a second look. Look at how the recipient is acting versus the actions of the individual exhibiting the concerning behavior. There are often subtle signs that we as bystanders can recognize. Check in. If you aren't sure if the behavior is an issue, ask. Ask what's going on or if everything is okay. Act as if someone you love is in the situation. In any scenario, Ask yourself, if someone I loved was in this situation, would I want someone to intervene? Barriers are anything that can prevent us from intervening in a situation. When talking about bystander intervention, there are three categories of barriers that may keep us from acting. They are personal, relationship, and general. Some personal barriers that might stop you from intervening could be you're introverted, fearful, uncertain, don't want to be embarrassed, and not sure if the situation is high risk. Relationship barriers could include you don't want friends, family, or colleagues to be upset with you, you don't want to be known as a snitch, you don't want to break an unspoken code, and there is pressure to go along with peers. Some general barriers could be that you think someone else will take care of it, you're afraid of being embarrassed or making a scene, 
and no one else seems concerned, so it's probably not a big deal. At this time, I would like you to pull out a piece of paper and pen. Now that we know about different barriers, we can recognize what may keep us from intervening and when we witness any types of power-based violence. A scenario would be shown to you. Write down a barrier that may keep you from intervening. Here's an example of a scenario and barrier. Your friend is treating their partner in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable. A barrier for this could be, I don't want to intervene because if I say something, it may create tension between me and my friend. So for you to try. A close friend of yours seems to be obsessed over their ex. They're calling, following, and texting them all the time, even though the ex has made it clear the relationship is over. Take a moment to write down something that may keep you from wanting to intervene. A barrier for this situation can be, you don't want your friend to be mad at you for confronting them. Take a moment to think of some barriers that you can relate to and why. Now that we recognize different barriers that may stop us from intervening, we can work on overcoming them. We can overcome our barriers by using the three Ds. The three Ds are direct, delegate, and distract. Direct is to do something yourself. An example of direct intervention would be if I saw someone yelling at their significant other and I went up to them and said something myself. Delegate is to get someone else to help. An example of this would be, if I saw a man getting physical with a woman and I didn't feel safe intervening myself, I will call the police. Distract is creating a diversion. An example of this would be, if I see two people arguing and I go up to them and ask for directions, distracting them from their argument. A scenario is going to come up on the screen. As the scenario comes up, I would like you to write down how you could intervene based on one of the three Ds. You are at a party and you see a woman who is obviously intoxicated being pulled up the stairs towards a bedroom. Take the time to write down how you would intervene using direct, delegate, or distract.
if you chose to write, you might have written down, go up to the woman and tell her you'd like to talk to her in private, or go up to the guy and ask what he's doing. For delegate, you might tell the woman's friend and suggest that she go help her. For distract, you could go up to them and ask if they have seen your friend or if they could help you look for them. Here are some resources that you can utilize. For other resources that we do not have listed, you can go to ecucares.ecu.edu. ECU Cares was developed to offer assistance to distressed individuals, connecting them to appropriate campus resources and reporting some concerning behavior to professionals on campus. I have also included QR codes for each resource and will stop on each one if you would like more information. ECU LiveSafe, ECU Counseling Center, ECU Cares, and Wellbeing Coaching. Here are references. I also wanted to remind you to remember your three W's. Thank you for listening to this presentation.